So we're just turning the microphone on everyone. Morning, councillors, CEO, directors, staff. Ready to go, right. So, councillors, uh, the traditional custodians of the land on which we gather. The Yuraburra people represent a human link dating back over 2,000 generations as part of the oldest living culture on the planet. And we pay our respects to the Indigenous Elders past and present and recognise their continuing connection to our community and our land. And for the public gallery, that's I think that's you, Roger. Um, <laughs> uh, please be advised up in the top right hand corner that uh, this meeting is being streamed live and published in accordance with the Council's standing orders and uh, will be on the Council's website. I've also got to advise you that uh, you may be subject to legal action if you, as a member of the public gallery, uh, your actions or your comments result in inappropriate or unacceptable behaviour, as uh, indicated up there. Right, well, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <coughs> Councillors, declare the meeting open and welcome to this meeting for August. Our opening prayer today is uh, Sister Lila Gelman. Sister Lila, welcome to Council. It's lovely to see you. Thank you. Thank you. So let us pray. Loving and gracious God, you are indeed the giver of all good gifts. Our Makai Regional Council come together this day to seek your wisdom, guidance, courage and strength. Be with them in their del deliberations and help them to be wise in the decisions they make for the good of all those who have placed their trust and confidence in their leadership. Give them insight to continue to lead with integrity that their decisions may reflect what is right and good. Help them to make decisions that continue to be for the good of all the people. Finally, dear God, grant them the humility to always seek your will in all that they do and say. All glory be to you, loving God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Lila. Absent on uh, council business today, Councillor Casey is uh, absent on council business today. We have uh, a request for a leave of absence as far as our apologies go from Councillor Bella. Would somebody like to move? Councillor Can moves. Councillor Bonaventura seconds. Those in favour? Any against? Motions carried. Any condolences? No condolences? No conflicts of interest to declare today, councillors? Thank you. Let's move on then. The confirmation of the minutes of the ordinary meeting of the 24th of July. Uh, they were circulated. We had nothing feedback, uh, no feedback from those uh, minutes circulation. Somebody would like to move the adoption. Councillor Bonaventura, seconded by Councillor Payton. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. There was no business arising out of that. There's no mayoral minutes. Let's move on to the committee reports, the draft minutes of the regional economy working group of the 18th of July. Are there any questions on that, that circulated draft minutes? Would somebody like to move the adoption? Councillor Englert moves, uh, seconded by Councillor G. Councillor Englert. Thank you, Worship. Uh, at this particular meeting, the Chamber of Commerce attended and gave us a, a briefing on what they're up to these days. Um, there was an agreement as a result of the meeting with the Chamber that uh, Council would move to work more closely with them in future, in, in particular around, um, you know, Council's management of of uh, what's uh, the, what's re remaining of the city centre levy, and they're going to help us out by um, consulting with uh, both the, the landlords and the, those in retail and other other businesses to uh, get give some feedback to council about what the people within the city centre area want us to do with uh, what's remaining of the levy. So it's a overall a good meeting with an agreement that we'll work closely together in future. Thank you very much, Councillor Angler. Speaker against? Any other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. 10 point... Oh, sorry, 11.1. I'll get it right in a minute. So 11.1 is the uh, Office of the Mayor and CEO monthly report for August. CEO. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Good morning, councillors. Um, we had three LTIs for the whole of last year and we've had two in a month, so just a reminder for us to keep focusing. While they're both relatively minor in nature, it's just um, something that just continues to make sure we focus on. 
Uh, the feasibility study for the mountain bike project's progressing well. We're on track to come back to council late September, early October with the next phase of that and the information. Um, a significant amount of work's been undertaken on the finalisation of the master plan. I had some sessions with some consultants and council this week off the PDA area and also some definition around some early projects, which hopefully we'll be able to announce shortly. Um, we continue and have increased our focus on the accuracy and setting clear processes around the long-term financial forecast. There's something you'll hear me talk about in the next 12 months. Um, as we've discussed with council, the business case development process for future years has commenced. We've actually had a meeting where I've identified I won't remember the exact number, but a number of business cases um, that we're proceeding with and we're coming to you in the near future with the pre-design works for the 2021 projects to get that pipeline of projects. Um, great to see um, stage 1A of Camilleri Park's off and running and we're talking about stages 1B and 2 today. Queen's Park, if you've been down there, that's all that council work, really start to progress really quickly down there on that $8.86 million upgrade. And uh, the Resource Centre of Excellence tender closes uh, next week, so it'll be interesting to see how that goes, and we're planning to bring that to this, well, in a perfect world, the 28th of August, but it would have to be the perfect world. It's probably more like 11th September, so we can proceed with that project. Thank you, CEO, and congratulations on the business case project. I think in terms of corporate uh, responsibility, a business case project that's now going to range out for the next three years uh, sets this council up really well, so congratulations. It's an excellent outcome to see that underway. Questions? Councillor Bonaventura. Your Worship, no, just... Your Worship, look over the previous couple of months, I've raised uh, several issues over the uh, <coughs> installation works of our small scale solar. And you know, while I'm disappointed that there's, there's a few sites still remain unconnected, I understand that the majority of the city relates to issues outside our control. My question today is uh, just in relation to the switchboard issue at the MEC and uh, what progress has been made for rectification or uh, in that area. So, yeah. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Bonaventure. I think Councillor G, I think, raised it sometime previously as well. So um, we have a major switchboard. The switchboard itself is okay, but the main isolation switch has an issue around turn it off, does it come back on and so on. So putting the solar to the side, um, so we, we work with Ergon to say we can disconnect the power out at the at station and get solar. I think it's a bigger issue for Council about getting, making sure the switchboard is working. So we've got our property services staff talking to experts around what the way forward. Uh, personally, I think it'll be an upgrade of the switchboard. So I've asked, um, there's a couple of departments, but I've asked our um, Director of Corporate Services to get me an emergency um, capital request to replace that switchboard. Sometimes switchboards 26 week delivery. Um, I'm not sure about this one, we'll have to have a look. So um, I'm expecting to have that in the next couple of weeks so that we can get that sorted. Councilor Bonaventure. Will uh, the connection of solar be <coughs> delayed until that is? No. So, uh, the instructions we've got from Ergon is um, they need that switch that to be working before they connect. We're going to I've asked the executive officer to contact Ergon and say, look, we, we're happy to to pay for you to turn it off out of the street to get the solar on while we're fixing this. What I'd like to do is prove to Ergon that we've commenced the um, purchase of the proper switchboard, so they know that it's not a temporary arrangement. So that's what the plan is. So we're not at the moment. They've told us wait till the switchboard's done before which could be a six month delay, that's unacceptable. So I'm very confident we can work with Ergon. If I was Ergon, I'd want us to see that we've got a plan in place to replace the switchboard. So that's why I need the switchboard capital requesting. Um, and the way that works is I, I have delegated authority for emergent works. Um, I'd probably approve that and then let tell councillors and put it in the re-forecast to get it done. Appreciate it. So we're just working out whether it's just a switch problem or it's a whole switchboard problem based on the age of the mech. Um, I'm suggesting it's probably a whole new switchboard, which we're probably better off just getting done. Um, and I think a couple of numbers I saw was a couple hundred thousand bucks, but um, let, let's get that information and go from there. Okay. Thank further you. questions? No further questions? Somebody at the council of members. Just in relation to our partnerships with um, organisations such as GW3, <coughs> and you may recall that I requested um, earlier on that RSDC, now that we have that arrangement through the Council of Mayors, to be included in the CEO's report so that we can get um, updates on that. So just for your noting, it would be great to see that included in the report. Okay, thanks very much. Councillor yeah, May. Sorry, missed that. We'll put that in the next report, Councillor right. May, sorry. All right, any further questions? Somebody like to move the report's adoption, please? Councillor May, uh, man, yes. <laughs> Seconded by Councillor Bonaventura, Councillor Mann. Yes, sorry. So, um, Again, this month's safety is at the forefront of everybody's minds, and it's very unfortunate that we have had two LTIs. 
I'm sure there's no staff member comes to work and wants to get hurt. So I would ask the CEO if you could pass on their best wishes to those staff members that are recovering, because I think it's very important that they wish our support. Um, I'm really pleased to see the progression of the key initiatives um, reported in the, in the CEO and Mayor's report, including um, people and culture initiatives, um, safety and governance, or governance and performance, and asset management initiatives. So the asset management plan has been a long time in the making, and it's really good to see that that's now on track and should be delivered by June 20, which will be really valuable. Um, we, there's a comment in the report about Lambert's Beach and Midge Point Beach restorations, and we've had a chance to view both just recently. Mm -hmm. um, I think the work is outstanding. Um, we need a little bit more time to get all the planting embedded, but that's an ongoing issue. And from <coughs> any, anything I've heard back from the public, people are really pleased with what has been done in both locations. So I think that's a really good outcome. Um, I was really pleased to note too, there was only five solar sites still to be connected to the grid. While the completion's a little bit overdue, I'm sure if the CEO had a crystal ball, and I did suggest this morning that he might like to obtain one, um, he would have foreseen the, <laughs> the unforeseen circumstances that led to that happening. Um, I think we need to take a bigger view and look at the savings that are going to be achieved for a very long time into the future, rather than what we may have missed out with the delays that have, that have occurred. Um, those savings are going to be an enormous benefit to all ratepayers, and I congratulate the CEO and the whole leadership team for bringing that initiative to us and, and looking for, continually looking for cost savings. Thanks so very much, Councillor Mayor. Speaker against? Any other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried unanimously. Thank you. Uh, 11.2, the acting CEO. This is a, um, a motion for Council to appoint Jason Devitt, the Director of Engineering and Commercial Infrastructure, as the acting CEO. At the time that the uh, CEO is on leave, 26th of August to the 24th of September. It's pretty well straightforward. Councillor May moves, seconded by Councillor Cam. Councillor May, put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. 11.3 uh, is a report on uh, my trade delegation as part of the Queensland trade delegation, trade mission uh, to the United States earlier this year. It's very well straightforward. Any questions? So, oh, just, just like to congratulate you, Your Worship, on that. Uh... Presentation, it's excellent, it's good to read, a lot of detail. Thank you. Thank you, okay. All right, somebody would like to move. Uh, Councillor Cam moves, seconded by Councillor Payton. Councillor Cam. Um, I just wanted to add, Mayor, I think um, building on that initial trip, it's really important that Council continues on this and, and to the future Council, that they continue strengthening those relationships because they are halfway around the world. Uh, and while we don't take lightly um, the investment value, uh, I think certainly from the report that you've provided and the, and the ongoing connections that continue to come through the door, it's a well worth investment on behalf of the community. Yeah, Thank you. I think it is too. So thanks very much, Councillor Cameron. Any other speakers? Any other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. Thank you. 1.4, attendance at the 123rd LGAQ <coughs> annual conference. That's for myself and Councillor May to be the Council's delegates. And Councillor Mann, Councillor Casey, Councillor Anglet, Councillor Payton, Councillor Walker, to be uh, official observers. For uh, that's a that's a great uh, result for this council to go to this LGAQ meeting. So, um, are there any questions? Somebody like to move the adoption? Councillor Cam moves. Councillor Bonaventura seconds. Councillor Cam. Um, I, I I do think it's great. Unfortunately, I have the Mackay Stedford that's also very important as well that week. So unfortunately, I can't attend. But I know Council May will vote um, furiously, I'm sure, on all the motions that this council wants to see get up. In particular, I just want to make sure that certainly Councillor May and Councillor Casey will be receiving recognition as well of their service to local government as well. So just that's to right. ensure that we have all that sorted before um, they depart as well. Thank you. So any other speakers? Put the motion. Those in favour. Any against? Motions carried. 1.5 uh, motions to the LGAQ annual conference. There's a couple of motions that we'd uh, put up for biosecurity and um, disaster management, particularly bushfire preparedness and prevention. Any questions around that? I mean, that's they've been circulated. Somebody would like to move the adoption then. Councillor May moves. Councillor Anglet seconds. Councillor May. Um, just briefly, Your Worship. I, I think it's um, really important that um, regional councils such as ours bring these matters that, that may not be city centre orientated matters to the forefront and the LGAQ conference is certainly the place to be able to do that. And, and as we know with the bushfires last year, there, there's 
um, came to light that there were certain lackings as far as preparedness was concerned, and um, that's the matter that we really want to raise at the conference. Thank you. Any other speakers? Thanks very much. It's been moved and seconded to put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. 11.6, attendance at the uh, 2019 Northern Alliance of Councils Conference. Once again, it's pretty well straightforward. <laughs> Councillor May moves. Councillor Walker seconds. Councillor May. Um, just to add, Your Worship, that it is, again, really important that our council has a presence at these gatherings. And I know that Councillor Casey is the delegate, but it's great to see um, our Deputy Mayor and even yourself being there for the Council of Mayors meeting um, this morning or this afternoon that will take place. Um, so again, I think it's a great opportunity to network with our fellow councillors and, and bring forward some of the issues and discussion around that. Thank you very much. Any other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. 11.7. Uh, this is a councillor attendance at the IAQ Queensland Infrastructure Summit. Councillor Cam is actually on a panel at this summit, which is very good for us as well. Any other questions? Seems like to move. Councillor Walker moves. Councillor Englert seconds. Councillor Walker. Self-response. Thank, okay, thank you. I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. 11.8. Adoption of council policies. Councillors, this has uh, been out for some time. We've had no feedback on these particular policies, the procurement policy and the sponsorship policy. Are there any questions? No questions? Would somebody like to move the adoption? Councillor Payton moves. Councillor Nan seconds. Councillor Payton? Ah, uh, straightforward. Thank you. Okay. I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. 11.9. Operational plan for the quarterly report, the uh, the fourth quarter for 2018-2019. And uh, CEO, 114 actions in the ops plan that really shows the breadth and depth of the business of this council. And uh, it's it's great. It's a good report to read. CEO. Uh, thank you. Actually, yeah, 114 actions for 2018-19. Unfortunately, 21 didn't meet the target, which is um, about 18%. Um, what we have done in the report, and I know it was requested by Council Cam some time ago, we've gone into a fair bit of trouble on the ones that we didn't meet to give a very comprehensive uh, reason. Some of them were actually in agreement with Council around coastal plans and some, but there's definitely some on there that it's back on us. So, uh, yeah, like 82% would like that to be higher, but I think there is good reasons around some of them. And I think um, I've written down here that 76% um, uh, of the 21 that didn't um, weren't complete are actually over 75% or greater complete. So they're also uh, not too many haven't been started and they'll be definitely finished this year. Questions for the CEO? No questions. Somebody would like to move the report's adoption, please. Councillor Walker, second by Councillor Mann. Councillor Walker. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Yes, it's, there's a lot in the report, that's for sure. And as you said, it covers a vast array of areas. And uh, uh, like the new capital directives there with the 94% delivery, which is excellent. Uh, I think that's been a successful move. Um, the state has approved the PDA development scheme again, which I think is very good for this community. Uh, Lampus Beach and Midge Point have been mentioned as the uh, <coughs> the sand re-nourishment and revegetation is finished and I know the community is council of men and said I'm very happy with that. Um, I think my HDI is going well over 40,000. That's mm. I think that's really good for the community and council and uh, version two of the new planning schemes up and running. And again, that's, that's excellent as well. So happy to move. Thank you very much, Councillor Walker. Any other speakers? No other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. 11.10. The Community and Client Services Monthly Review for July, CEO. Uh, thank you. Um, this report's getting bigger and mm. more comprehensive of what's going on and, and, and a lot of work going on in this department. So great to see no safety or, or major injuries in the department. 82 community members participate in four grant writing um, workshops, which is absolutely fantastic. And given the increased expenditure and, and grants that uh, this council's put in for this year, I think that'll come to good stead for those people. Uh, very successful pet registration day. Um, even I held some greyhound dog for a little while, but I think the owner was distressed after 15 minutes. Um, <laughs> dog was. <laughs> <laughs> um, great to see 360 young people attended the Serena Youth Centre in July. Um, I, I haven't seen those numbers before, but that's, that's a fantastic uh, use of that facility down there. Um, very successful month, a few travel issues for Matsura, both um, some people from Mackay going over there and then coming back. It's a very successful program again. Uh, and the uh, end of the year is the anniversary program, which I know a couple of uh, the mayor and a couple of councils are going to. So we have an estimated 54,000 people attended the Festival of Art events this year. So 
that in anyone's language is a great success. The feedback's very, very positive about all those events. And uh, I went over and uh, personally thanked the MEC staff yesterday for all their work. And I know it's a wider council initiative, but it's a uh, fantastic <coughs> execution. Uh, and just in our emergency management space, we're transitioning over to a new Guardian IMS platform. So it sounds like very benign, but that will be very helpful for us as we move forward. Hopefully we don't have any disasters, but if we do, we'll have a much better reporting and more efficient system um, to capture any actions. Thank you, CEO. Questions for the CEO? No questions? Something cancelled on, Mitchell? Um, just wait. No, apologies. No, Your Worship, I don't have a question. Okay, right. Uh, somebody would like to move the report's adoption. Councillor Mann moves, seconded by Councillor Payton. Second, uh, Councillor Mann. So, um, another good result with safety for the month with no LTIs. Um, museums all reported fairly good numbers, and it's pleasing to see the Pioneer Valley Museum is actually soft opening at the end of this month after mm -hmm. an extended period of closure. So, there's been lots of work going into getting that reopened, so it'd be really good to see that happening again. Um, Artspace have had another very busy month with the amount of programs being offered and I was really pleased to see that 90% um, of their art collection has now one to three photos available online. So that's a really, really good result, you know, in, um, making our art collection accessible for everybody. Um, again, MECC delivered another massive festival of arts. So when you look at the numbers, 54,000 people attending the events over nine days and over 20,000 that illuminate for the five nights that that ran. So that's a big, big effort. And I think our, our events team needs to be congratulated on that yeah. as well. Um, and I would like to make mention of Council and Community in July. So Councillor and I, I believe, <coughs> uh, came up with a really good program. I think it was a really good mix of community involvement and looking at council assets. And um, I think the highlight of the day was starting the day at Lambert's Beach, but just the whales didn't... Well, it was too early for the whales, but I think it was really nice to start the day there. We're there now, apparently. Yes. yes. Thank you very much. As any other speakers? Councillor Bonaventure, you're speaking for? Yes, you were. Mm -hmm. uh, just um, <coughs> as has been mentioned once already by the CEO, it was pleasing to see over 80 participants attend that uh, grant writing mm -hmm. workshop. Look, with our revised uh, format for grants this year, it's important that groups have the opportunity to put together an application that not only reflects their needs, but also um, in a format that uh, we can assess their ability to deliver that project. So I think it's very, been very, very good and very beneficial. And I'd like to thank uh, the director <coughs> and staff for putting that on. Just the other one I'd like to mention is in relation to museums, and that is um, having recently visited the Serena Museum, and uh, excited um, volunteers telling me about the Vegemite story down there. So everyone loves Vegemite, but uh, they received a gift from, um, uh, from Vegemite Australia, sent them a gift to, uh, to recognise what they had done in promoting Vegemite. And the fact that Vegemite was produced in our region mm. for uh, 20 years, from 1951 to 1971, mm. I think is something that very few people know, and I'm very proud to be you part of it. We don't make enough effort of it. No, we certainly don't. And uh, just to set the record, on the record, I do have a Vegemite plate at home, which uh, I photographed, and they now are on display down at Serena as well, so they're very excited down there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Bonaventura. Councillor May, you're speaking for? Yes, thank you, Mr May. I, I really just wanted to follow on from the Vegemite to start with. And people that live in Serena know the Vegemite was made in Serena, but there will be a story in Saturday's Mercury, the inside story about Vegemite from a... Uh, the the, um, the plants perspective. So watch this space for that story um, on the weekend. The other um, point that I wanted to highlight <coughs> is the Mayor's Charity Ball. And I think it might be a record amount that was raised. $121,000 was raised from that event. Sunrise Rotary Club uh, worked with council in putting that event on. But I think the great outcome of that is a counsellor for the Mackay Women's Centre, yes. an absolutely <coughs> invaluable resource for our um, community and yourself and, and everybody that was involved in the Mayor's Charity Ball need to be congratulated. Well done. Thank you very much, Councillor May. Any other speakers? No other speakers, I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. 11.11. .11. This is the draft local coastal plan for McEwen's Beach. We've had briefings on this, councillors. Uh, are there questions attached to this draft plan? No questions. Somebody would like to move then its adoption. Somebody, Councillor Payton moves. Councillor Anglet seconds. Bye. <laughs> Councillor Payton. Very briefly, thank you, uh, Your Worship. Uh, yeah, this is another one of the, our uh, coastal plans coming through. Uh, as, uh, been, uh, our staff have been working through them. 
Uh, this is just a draft plan at this stage, so that we can go into uh, consultation with the community and that. So, um, yeah, that as well. Thank you very much. Speaker against. Any other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. 11.12, Capital Works Monthly Review for July, CEO. Uh, thank you, Worship. Again, no major <coughs> safety incidents or injuries for July, which is a great. Uh, most projects are travelling to plan or on track. Um, we're estimating a total capital spend for this year of about $127 million, which is, is the carryover stuff that's still to be formally adopted, but which we envisaged. Uh, the spend for July was about $6.5 <coughs> so it's about 85%. Um, most of the underspend of $960,000 was just around the timing of the payment for some plant equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to do a lot of work in this year to have that uh, work list of about 9 or $10 million ready to go by the 1st of July next year. Uh, and I think, you know, the reports we continue to refine and congratulate the new director on the report is that key projects like the Mackay Tourism Kiosk, the Meg Fire System up with the Brewers Road Shared Path, we're getting a different amount of information and detail where we are in the different delivery stages of design, <coughs> procurement and tendering. So they're all up and running and uh, it's all looking pretty good. Thank you very much, CEO. And uh, $127 million has turned into a fairly substantial year again for, uh, for our capital expenditure, which is uh, very good. I note that the... Um, the first month, even though the new director's only been in there for a couple of weeks, 84%. <laughs> Away to go. But we'll keep our eye on the space. No pressure, Director Sam. Okay, are there questions? Councillor May. Um, can I just ask a question in relation to the four waste drainage um, <clears throat> relining there? And I, I see that um, the barricades and whatever are still on the highway there. I'm just wondering around how long that that's going to take to be completed. Yeah. That's the question, CEO. That's a good question, so I can either to um, the acting Thank director you. for today. Thank you. Um, Thank you. The, the logic for the barriers there is because during the institute line, there's actually a fire at the institute line, it actually lifted the lids of the culverts. So the, the barriers are there for a safety issue until the pavements are repaired because of that. Mm -hmm. We've got to look at an alternative to the lining. Okay. Um, that basically is a big sock that runs through the end there and they pressurise the sock. When they pressurise the sock, they lift the lids and the culverts and including disturbing the road pavement. Mm. Okay. So, uh, yes, Seaforth Civil engaged by the, the, um, the contractor to do the pavement repairs. We're just waiting for TMR to sign off on the traffic management plan so they can go. So acting director is a time scale attached to this? Well, time scale is driven by TMR approving the traffic management plan. As soon as the traffic right. management plan is approved, they can go and do the work. Right. Okay. So, Councillor May. Just, just one further question. So, mm -hmm. has the actual relining been completed, or uh, we're, we're not doing that now? It, it failed basically. So, yeah. what happened was, as I said, the sock when it was inflated, it actually popped the lids. Yep. So, they had to actually bail out and um, on the actual line. So, we're going to have to look at an alternative treatment that doesn't pressurise it and and lift the lids to the same extent. Okay. Thank so you. We're working on it. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor. Okay. Thank you. I was just at Lambeth Beach the other day, uh, Mayor, and my question is really about the, the rehabilitation works because there is, um, certainly to the south, there is quite a scarp now that's formed just with tidal, which is going to happen obviously at certain points, but where the swimming beach is, it's fine, but there's certainly several, <coughs> at least 10 metres, maybe a bit more, where that's really cut in. So I know that there's going to be some vegetation work, I think, this weekend as part of the the, the community event out there, um, but but in the monitoring of that coastline, I guess drawing the attention of natural environment, monitoring all of that, and I think potentially some signage there because kids and families think it's great to just jump off that dune because it's quite a large um, fall, and so but but very concerning given we've just finished those works and we've probably got high tides about to kick in in the next few days um, and, the, and the damage that that, I think some of that sand capsule G outlined is probably at IMEO now. We've, we've seen a big sand bank there, but just the monitoring of that in the natural environment okay. and some signage along that. Do you want to look at that, you? Yeah, and I think the tide that came through was 6.1, so it's quite yeah. a big tide that caused that damage. And you're right, that's going to happen. I think it's a good point. When we've done the design, which you, you've been a part of, is with that new fence, we're trying to direct people to go down to the beach through certain access points yeah. compared to what it was in the past, but you're right, people will be people. Yeah. I think it's a fair point. We need to just have a look about where those scarfs are and yeah. maybe we can find some signage that can be continually moved if mm. if, if we do it. So I think that's a good point from yeah. a safety point of view, just mm. to discourage people. So yeah. Take yeah. it on board. Yeah. Thank you. 
Further questions? Councillor Bonaventure? I'm just one of the CEO. Um, I note that um, our new director has started. Um, we've got seven contract services being issued and two of those are a footpath and one is a kiosk. Was that deliberate to just break the director in gently, uh, CEO? Yes. Yeah. Thanks, Councillor Bonaventure. Big stuff early. Thank you. Um, further questions? Somebody would like to move the report's adoption. Councillor Payton, seconded by Councillor Kent. Councillor Payton. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I would firstly like to commend the Director uh, for a couple of works for the quality of the report. Uh, the new layout and definitely uh, assist Council to understand uh, what's happening in the Directorate and each stage of, you know, that the projects are at. So, it's, uh, yeah, thanks very much for that. Uh, the Director's first month uh, has resulted in 84% of actual spend the capital budget, but this is early days and I've got confidence in the director that we'll see an increase in this. Uh, I think we were heading for 95, I think, wasn't it? Uh, there's uh, truly some awesome projects uh, being delivered to the community right across the region. And this, uh, we see uh, Caping, Caping Road Bridge replacement. Uh, unfortunately, this has been delayed with recent weather, but uh, we'll be getting back on track. Uh, the Gorge Road, an important tourism road. Uh, Milton Boundary Road intersection. Uh, this upgrade is a very important intersection for traffic flow uh, from our airport and also uh, through the Paget areas. Uh, we see, also see the Kamala water softener. Uh, this is lifting you know, the aesthetic standard of uh, water supply uh, for this regional township. Uh, the Mackay Tourism Kiosk. Uh, this is at Blue Water Quay, and this is you know, complementing the new uh, tourism information centre that we have at the Field of Dreams, another great project. Uh, the ongoing sewer renewals, stormwater realigning, uh, resurfacing, reseal programs, these projects may not sound exciting, but we definitely hear about it if they're not all working. Mm -hmm. so, very important projects. Our uh, Brewers Park. Uh, share pathways, uh, the Ron Searle Harbour Road pathway and the Hospital Bridge uh, Fishing Pier. These are all great projects encouraging our community uh, to experience our great lifestyle and actually get out into the environment. Uh, the Resource Centre of Excellence, uh, a partnership between Council, uh, the State and also the Resource Industry Network uh, this will bring uh, research, education, and ultimately jobs to our region. So, another, another great one. So, this is only some of the uh, $127 million worth of projects uh, being delivered uh, to this area, and it's truly a great mix of the diverse projects that we have going. Thanks very much, yeah. Councillor Payton. Speaker against. Any other speakers? Councillor May. Um, just really wanted to um, congratulate the director on his appointment. Um, we look forward to working with him over the, the coming period. And I think, you know, like to, to have a capital directorate where we're, we're um, implementing a $128 million um, capital program over a 12-month period, and, and we've seen the results of last year where we, we just missed the mark by about 5%, around about $8 million um, of that project programs being implemented across the board. It's it's a challenging directive, no doubt, and um, and it was really great to see that um, one of our own people actually was successful in the position. I know it was highly contended from, mm. from all over Australia, and um, it was really great to see that um, our um, uh, personnel have, have come up trumps with that. So we look forward to, um, to working with the director over the coming 12 months. And I really just wanted to highlight the Kamala water softening plant. It's, um, it's one of those projects that is probably not the, the, the most fancy, um, but we've seen great results as we did with Eton in, a, in an implementing the softening plant there. And I know that the people of Kamala will be very interested in, and awaiting the arrival of the implementation of the softening plant down there. Thank you very much, Councillor May. Any other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? Mm -hmm. Motion's carried. No receipt of uh, petitions today. Let's move on to the tenders. And 13.1 is the Camilleri District Park upgrade 102. 
CEO, do you want to speak to that? I'll just quickly, Your Worship. Um, stage one, the council approved some time ago, which was around a million dollars from the state funding. Uh, this is for stage one, B and two. I apologise to Councillor G, who'd asked me for the scope some time ago, and we only sent something through, so I apologise for that. Um, we are asking, which we, we don't like to do, but we are asking for $215,000 above budget. Um, we've done a lot of work on the scope, and uh, I'm recommending that we, we go over budget the next reforecast we work through how we get it back on, because if we take that $215,000 of extra scope out, we don't think it makes too much sense on the scope that we've finished. So we think we need to do it and do it properly in this stage. Uh, there is a lot of work being done. Stage 1A is already underway. Um, great to see two local firms, um, Fergus and, and Seaforth, apply for the role. Uh, pretty well, we'd be happy with both of them, but in this case, we're, we're recommending Fergus, so we're very keen to get into it. Thank you very much, CEO. Questions for the CEO, Councillor Ken? Thank you. I have several. Um, one uh, is you've, the report outlines that um, the tenderer information request was issued to one of the tenderers seeking clarification on the non nominated quality of criteria. I'm just interested to understand what that is, and you may not be able to answer that now. Um, but my concern is the differential in the cost base between both tenders, so um, both, sorry, uh, applicants, given when we've gone back to them um, where we've actually um, sent back um, basically, you know, yeah, TIRs, sorry, I'm trying to use simple language for, yeah. for the community. But when we basically went back um, to them the, the margin in which they both tended hasn't changed too much. So my concern is that the overall project, which is, forget that it's outside of the budget and that can be dealt with because we want to deliver a quality outcome for the community there, um, but the margin in which they've both come back after the TIR still sits at about the same of $100,000. So my question that I'm concerned is, who's right in the cost and how confident are we that it's not going to be 100k over budget if we award to the recommended tender, number one. And number two is what is their experience in this type of development? Because my understanding of the work that they have done certainly in my time in council has been more on internal um, physical uh, construction. Um, more resident, you know, in the way of commercial building construction than outdoor civil works. So I have of concerns so with the <coughs> the cost differential and the, and the margins, CEO. It's, yeah. it's hundred grand on both, yeah. roughly. So hopefully I can answer your questions because I was involved in the tender and mm -hmm. I know the process very well. Um, so it, when we uh, so in stage one B, obviously the first price has come in. We then made a call that we wanted to reduce scope. Went back with and very formal, as you were aware, very formal process on TIRs. Everyone gets the same information mm -hmm. to make sure it's all above board. Mm -hmm. You're right. So one one tender came back with the same margin. All I can estimate is the scope of works that changed. The ones that are still remaining were the ones that had the big differential in. Mm -hmm. uh, and in this market right now, and I'm not speaking on behalf of these tenders because I, I don't know the detail, but we are seeing that depending on the timing of the project and where it fits their schedules is whether um, whether they, they sort of the, sh the pricing is sharp or not. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not a criticism, it's just about where it fits in. This one is quite a quick one, so I'm not sure what one of the tenders timeline is. Uh, on your second question is, um, because both these companies we've done multiple work with and we mm -hmm. continue to do, and both I think have been awarded contracts with us in the last couple of months, yeah. we're very, very comfortable that they understand the scope. Mm -hmm. The scope technically for 1B, actually 1A was the more technical mm -hmm. um, with the skate park and the push track. This mm -hmm. is actually landscaping, footpaths and relatively basic mm -hmm. um, infrastructure. Uh, so um, I, I couldn't comment, I'm not sure if the Director of Capital Works can, is I'm sure they've actually subbied to another local company to do the stuff that they're not the landscaping. They right. wouldn't have pulled that themselves. We check all that as part of the qualitative mm -hmm. assessment. Um, and it's a fair point that you raise. I'd be quite confident with both these companies that we deal with on a regular basis that um, the Fergus in this case are, are quite keen for the work. They might have a gap in their workload and they're quite keen to get into. Uh, so I'd be quite confident that the scope of works are quite um, benign in this case. So I'd mm -hmm. be surprised that it could blow out by too much because uh, there's not a lot of geotech and a lot of symbols, it's pretty straightforward. Um, and the pricing on stage two is a bit much closer, with, which, you'll, which you saw. So it's 1B that's the, the, the area. Uh, I'm not sure if there's anything else I've missed to add on your questions. Yeah. Director? No, I, 
same same comments I had to the CEO. I wasn't personally involved in the assessment, but mm -hmm. obviously it was part of my area to deliver. Um, so I don't have all the details on the responses to the TIRs. In relation to Fergus's capability on that work, there's no question about mm -hmm. their capability to deliver that work. Um, it, they've got lots of experience in not only commercial buildings, but a lot of other um, associated works, particularly external works like car parks, um, mm -hmm. bars and this case, walks and things. So I've got no concerns about their capabilities um, in delivering that work. Okay. Thank you, CEO. Yes, we can. Um, so the variance that you've allowed in the project, given it's already over budget, sorry, is how much? Two hundred million. So the variance to sorry, yeah. sorry. sorry. The variance to budget is two hundred fifteen thousand, Councillor Kent. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so stage one was a million dollars. Sorry. So, yeah. So the yeah. contingency amount. No, you've got one hundred thirty-nine thousand. Yeah. So one hundred thirty-nine thousand on a. It's one point six seven million that the other stage one A, which has already been approved by council, yeah. I think was for nine seventy something okay. from memory. Mm -hmm. uh, so that contingency for this type of work, we're quite comfortable with. Okay. Yeah. So my my concern is, and I'll put it on the record, if you come back and and the one we've awarded is a hundred thousand out, not going to be happy. Yep. Because uh, I've asked those questions, so that's the. Yeah, that's understand. the yeah. understand. Okay. Yep. Thanks, Councillor Kim. Thanks. Paul. Any other questions? Somebody would like to move the reports adoption. Councillor G moves the reports adoption. Councillor Bonaventura, Councillor G. I'd like to thank um, Seaforth Civil and Fergus for their submissions and congratulate Fergus on winning the, winning the tender. Uh, I hope young Ethan and Flynn can actually <coughs> look at this park in 12 months time and say, we did this. Uh, I think it's hats off to all the capital team uh, right through to the community with the original consultation. This park isn't going to be just a skate park, it's going to be an all-purpose family destination now that the Northern Beaches has needed for a long time. Thank, yeah, you. thank you very much, Councillor Lee. Any other speakers? Councillor Bonaventure, you're speaking for? I did move. Second the motion. Oh, no, that's right. Okay, you did too. <laughs> right. Yes, you're speaking for, Councillor Bonaventure. Thank you. Look, I'm happy to support this uh, motion because I think it, it finishes this project off. And can I say, prior to the, the last state election, Councillor G saw a need and took it uh, on as his goal to achieve funding from both major parties. And the rest, as they say, is, is history. So in supporting this project, I'd like to pass on my appreciation to Councillor G for his efforts uh, for his community in achieving uh, the better part of this project. So thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Bonaventura. Speakers, uh, Councillor Cam. Thank you, Councillor Bonaventura stole my thunder. <laughs> right, right. Um, because I too was going to acknowledge Councillor G's, I think, uh, tenacity and his um, uh, you know, his fortitude in not just standing up for the Northern Beaches, um, obviously in the delivery of this project and supporting our, um, our youth out there who were very strong advocates, as we know. Um, but also it is a beautiful connection to both the Burke Street Park, um, the stairways and all, and all of the other associated um, linking footpaths, which is, which is, as we know, um, the Northern Beaches is drastically under service. So um, I too, along with Council Bonaventura, um, want to congratulate Councillor G on his advocacy for the Northern Beaches because ultimately um, he did put the politicians um, in, a, in a position where they had no choice but to make some commitments and so we, we recognise those brutal. efforts. Politically brutal. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Okay, any other speakers? There's certainly uh, no doubt about the Northern Beaches uh, voice in uh, Councillor G's at the table. So thank you very much. I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. Thank you. Uh, there's no notified motions today. Public participation? No public participation. Late business. We do have a request for a leave of absence for Councillor Bonaventura and Councillor Walker. And that qualifies in late business, so we'll do one each. Councillor Bonaventura, first of all, count moved by Councillor Cam, seconded by Councillor Payton. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. For Councillor Walker, moved by Councillor Mann, seconded by Councillor England. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. Thank you. Any other late business? Councillor Mann. So, <coughs> Your Worship, this weekend is the inaugural uh, Land Speech Splash Fest. Um, brought to the community by the Side Point Neighbourhood Watch Community Group, who have done so much in this region for connecting their community. And I would just encourage people to support it because if it's successful, it will continue. There's going to be a whole range of activities and stalls and entertainment, a fun run, and hopefully the whales will appear on queue. But 
the local businesses have also got behind and supported that, so I would just encourage the community to support it as well. Thank you very much, Councillor Mann. Any other late business? Councillor May. Thank you very much, Your Worship. <laughs> I really just wanted to, um, to mention the coordinator of the Serena Sugar Shed um, departing mm -hmm. employment with the um, Mackay Regional Council. And, and really to set the scene, if I just give a little bit of background as to how that came about, and if you, you turn back the clock about 15 years, for the Serena Shire Council to have the insight into going into a tourism venture, not just a tourism venture, but a tourism venture that produces alcohol, which was never heard of in, in local government um, spheres, was, was a great undertaking. And, and myself as the mayor and the then CEO had the pleasure of, of doing the interviews for that coordinator manager position at the time. And Glenis Mansfield, our current coordinator, blitzed the field. She, she came to that interview with the passion and the drive that was required to, um, to not just um, run the sugar shed because the sugar shed, the buildings were built, the fit out was done, but the mill part was not. So. She used her connections with her previous employment at CSR Plain Creek <coughs> Mill and gathered a whole heap of volunteers that helped to assemble, um, some places even modifying and making the, the mill and the, the distillery part of our operation down there. And it's grown that into an award-winning um, tourist attraction, an award-winning <coughs> food excellence and tourism facility that the whole region can be very, very proud of. And um, I just wanted to really acknowledge the work that she's done over the past 13 years in really making the, the vision of the then Serena Shire Council come to life. So well thank done. You, thank you very much, Councillor May. And uh, yes, we were down there to pass on our best wishes to um, Glenis. I'm sure she'll do a great job in the Isaacs region. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, Councillor Cairn. Thank you. business, thank yes. You. Um, so I just want to draw council and the community's attention to um, the Runners 1 for cystic fibrosis. You can still register online Sunday morning, run 5Ks with me and other people, no. Uh, or you can come and walk your dog or maybe your cat um, as well. So that's, uh, that's kicking off obviously Sunday morning, but also as a proud member of Zonta, along with Councillor Mann and, and our director as well, Bridget Mader, we have Zonta's birthing kit uh, workshop that we do annually. Um, and that is welcome for anyone to come along, men and women, uh, at Holy Spirit at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning. So um, it's a very worthwhile activity and more hands make life work. So that's to help um, women deliver safe, safely their babies into the world, in particular in impoverished um, conditions. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Ken. Further late business. No further late business. Councillors, we've got three items in uh, in confidential reports. Um, is there a need? We've we've had to, we've had no questions on any of the items at all in late business. Oh, sorry, in uh, confidential. So there's, if there's no need, then we'll go straight into uh, adopting those items. Seventeen point one: the draft minutes of the Invest Mackay Events and Conference Attraction Program uh, for July. Moved by Councillor Mann, seconded by Councillor Walker. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. 17.2, the Greater Wood Sunday Alliance, uh, uh, that report for the um, KPIs. Uh, somebody move. Councillor Payton moves. Councillor Cam seconds. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. And the RSPCA uh, report in confidential at 17.3, would somebody like to move? Councillor Englert moves. Councillor May seconds. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. Thanks, councillors. Thank you, CEO. Thank you, directors. And ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> please, the meeting closed.